Hello, um, I'm Revital Cohen. I just graduated from the Design Interactions Department at the Royal College of Art that I hope um, all of you heard of yesterday from Tony and Fiona, Dan and Raby. And um, I'm going to just quickly, very quickly, over six minutes, talk you through my, um, my degree pieces. OK, um, the thing I got most interested in, interested in is the way um, technology affects biology, the way the human body is changes with uh, advancements in science, and uh, what we are becoming. What kind of things do we, should we design for? for the new human, the transhuman, um, the evolving person. And I was really interested in the idea of the cyborg and um, this human who is really um, so connected to technology, it becomes part of the body. And um, I was wondering what it, what it means to live like this. And I went looking for cyborgs in uh, everyday reality. And uh, surprisingly, I managed to find quite a few in, um, in a dialysis ward in a hospital in Manchester. And I went and interviewed those people who are connected to a machine, and um, this machine controls the, their life, and asked them what it feels like. And um, one of the things that really stayed with me was that at some stage, one of them started crying. And as she did, the machine stopped working because, um, because of the salt levels in the blood. And I thought, how come if you lose your eyesight, you get this lovely Labrador? But if your kidney stop working, you get this computer that doesn't even allow you to cry. Um, so I thought, well, there must be a better, more humane way to, to design these, these technological things that keep people alive. And um, then I found this article, which this uh, research, which sounds absolutely amazing, though I'm not even sure it's true. And it's uh, scientists that want to clone animals to grow human blood basically um, cows and sheep that will then be killed um, in the blood use for transfusions. And I said, well, why kill those animals? Why not use them, use their organs that are just, um, there's still no computer or machine that work as well as a, as a living biological um, organ does. So why not take this sheep, instead of killing it for the blood, just keep it alive and use its kidney to filter the blood. And um, I really like the parallel of the dialysis machine, which is next to the bed and the way sheep are kind of connected to sleep and people count them and, um, yeah. <laughs> um, and then um, the way it's going to work, basically, is the person who, who has kidney failure give a blood sample to the lab. Um, the scientists then make him a specific, unique transgenic lamb who has his, the person's human blood. During the day, this sheep is uh, free to roam in the garden it's the pet, it has its free life, but at night it needs to come sleep on this platform next to the person. Um, one pump takes the blood out of him while he sleeps, goes into the sheep where it gets filtered, back to the person clean, and then the sheep urinates the toxins. Um, and then I made another machine, and the next one is a ventilation device for people who can't breathe on their own. And um, this one is made out of a retired greyhound. And it's, um, it's a, it's a non-invasive machine. The greyhound wears this harness. Basically, while he, when he breathes, his lung movement um, pushes this small bellow, which then pushes air into the big bellow on its back, which pushes it into the person's lung. And I was really inspired by this little image I found on Google of this woman who was um, desperately trying to give a bit of character to this oxygen tank she had to carry around. And um, I can't really go into detail because of time, but the Greyhound was also an absolute perfect candidate to be this machine because of um, character and physicality. So the story here, the Greyhound is created as, he, as it is now for the racing industry, um, spent two to five years racing for money. Then um, instead of being euthanized as happening now, he will be ad adopted by the hospital and retrained to become a ventilation device. And um, I put this slide on just to show that this was not just some kind of random idea that I had, but it actually followed a very serious design process where everything has been considered and um, engineered, calculated. This is um, the calculation of exactly how the Greyhound's lung movement will make the person breathe. And um, the treadmill was basically, well, um, how do you have an on-off button on a dog? How do you 
I don't know, there's no doubt, it tell go faster, go slower. So the rabbit um, uses the dog's previous education. When he sees him, he starts running, person breathes a bit more. And uh, just a quick word about the ethics. Um, there's, there's many questions this project brings, and uh, is it ethical? I don't know, and the whole point of the project is these questions, but um, I also really wanted to look into animals as products as they are now, because this lamb ended up as the steak, and um, that greyhound used to be a product for entertainment. And um, the thing that really interests me is that with these developments in science, we are, starting, we are starting to see biology as a material for designers to, to start considering. And suddenly there's a blur of all the natural kingdoms, not so much a division between plant, material, animal. Okay, super quick second project. Um, this one, I was just really fascinated how women have stopped feeling their, um, um, their urge to have children because of the pill, because of the idea of IVF, um, egg freezing all this feeling of opportunity awaits. So I made this, this is the artificial biological clock, and basically it's um, an external instinct, works on, um, it stands on the mantelpiece. Every month it loses um, a ball to show every woman is born with a very limited number of eggs, and um, <laughs> it works on the internet. <laughs> Thank you. And um, on information, fed by the, the woman's um, doctor, therapist, and bank manager. Because basically, I think, um, well, biological instincts, they, they depend on so much. They're influenced by so many other things that happen in our lives. And I ran out of time, but you can see the rest on my website. And thank you very much.